Welcome to the Untitled Film Project podcast. We can't get to every movie, but we can try to touch on at least a few of them that we missed. Let's do that today. All right, this is Justin. I'm going to go ahead and get things started with a movie that has been getting so much talk for months, and that is The Whale, starring Brendan Fraser. This is not a feel-good movie, <laughs> although they're they're trying to portray this as someone who always sees the positive in everything. You're not going to walk out of this movie feeling better about yourself because it is not portrayed that way in the way that Darren Aronofsky puts this film out. First of all, tremendous performance from Brendan Fraser. It is, by all means, a great way to see him back. Uh, I do believe with this film he deserves a nomination. I don't believe he should win, though, okay. uh, in this. But it is definitely a great way for him to make his true big comeback uh, into Hollywood, especially with the way that he portrays the character itself. And for backstory, very limited cast, very small cast. This is based on a play as well. So the the, the thing is, is you have this very, very large person who is teaching <laughs> online classes but never has his camera on. Um, he's... A, Put out as a reclusive English teacher that is attempting to reconnect with his estranged teenage daughter. And that is one way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> this, the, the film itself, some of the, I'll start with some of the negatives. What stood out to me negatively was the blocking in <laughs> some of this because it was a play. I don't know if this was conscious effort by Ar- Aronofsky to have dramatic pauses in blocking. But that's exactly what was happening when some characters would walk to one side of the room. You would see them in camera do that, and then the camera angle would change, and they would turn their body like you're watching a play. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. I don't need that dramatization of this in the film. Uh, While I say Brendan Fraser is great, the performances from these two characters, or these two actresses, Sadie Sink and Hong Chow are the ones that stood out to me more. So Brendan Fraser is obviously getting all the talk with this. But I think more needs to be said of what Sadie's saying, especially coming off of Stranger Things. Yeah, she's uh, she <laughs> is really quickly becoming a Very, yes. rising star, huge rising star. For Who had a fear acting. of being typecast, mm-hmm. thanks to that, and that was yeah. the issue. I think the the, the fear. It, if I'm her agent, I'm like, hey, you got to get out there as soon oh, yeah. as possible. Yeah. So it, the dramatic acting that she portrays in this is incredible. And when I say limited cast. Just an IMDb, there are seven people credited. Wow. <laughs> very, very, very small cast. We're talking, you have Brendan Fraser plays Charlie, Sadie Sink who plays his daughter. Um, you have the missionary, Hong Chao who plays his best friend, his ex-wife, and a pizza delivery guy, and then just a basically uncredited young daughter. There are adult films that have a bigger cast than this. <laughs> and they also have a pizza guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimothy. <laughs> oh my gosh. But the film itself, this is, I think we've said this before on the show. The acting is phenomenal in this movie. I don't care for the story as much. These, these performers put on such an incredible show, but I don't care for Aronofsky's work behind this as much as I think people are talking about. And I think that's why we're seeing people talk about Brendan Fraser's performance and not the movie. Yeah, everything is. Brendan Fraser gives an incredible performance. Well, nobody's talking about the movie itself. I don't think the movie itself is that good. There's no redeeming quality in the movie. I'm looking for some some sort of redemption or some sort of arc of realization, and I didn't get that. And I was wanting that so bad. And it, it's a only two hour movie, but it felt longer mm, than that. Not good. And but that's not on the actors. Right. That's on the director. That's on the editing. That's on so many other uh, people in this. So. If you want to come out of the theater feeling a little depressed, <laughs> yeah, feeling a little... That's usually an emotion I try oh, to go into the theater. Uncomfortable? A little uncomfortable, a little of, oh man, why did I do that to myself? Go watch The Whale. If you want an incredible performance and you want to walk out of there going, Brendan Fraser's more than The Mummy. Sadie Singh's more than Stranger Things. Hung Chao is fantastic in the emotion she expresses. You want to see acting performances? Then you go see The Whale. Go into the movie for that reason and not for wanting to go see a good movie. So with that, I give the movie itself a seven. 
It's my turn, and I'm gonna go Lyle Lyle Crocodile. I'm gonna go a little, little, little left of center for you guys. Uh, okay. My son is <laughs> ten. And really wanted to see this, and I remember thinking, I saw. Okay, so first of all, let me back up. The trailer comes out, and I think I rolled my eyes. <laughs> right? There's a singing alligator in a bathtub, and it's like, okay, like I, I understand that when you go to the movies, you have to suspend belief. I'm sure. a Star Wars fan. I get it. But I was like, oh my god, like really, like this is what we've resorted to. Apparently, it's a book. Okay, fine. But I was just like, this is, you know, whatever. And then I rolled them again when at the end they revealed that Sean Mendez was the voice of Lyle, the crocodile. Yeah. And I thought, it's not because Sean Mendez is bad. He's phenomenal, actually. He's a great musician. But I thought, oh, this is the hook that the production company even made this movie for was because they got Sean Mendez attached to the project <laughs> and he can put out some original music and they can sell some records. And, the, you know, that's what I thought. Oh, okay. Right. Javier Bardem it was great with what he was. I'm coming back to the show of the down on his luck magician, Hector B. Valente, Hector P. Valente, excuse me. He plays the opportunist extremely hard when you're arguably known as a psychopathic assassin yeah. in your best movie that you won best actor for. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's very difficult to like go way on the other side, swing to the other side of the spectrum and be a magician who is desperate. That's, that's really, that's pretty difficult in a family movie. Yeah. I enjoyed and appreciated the representation. I enjoyed the story enough. The music is ridiculously catchy. So much so that I would not be surprised if one of Shawn Mendes' songs ends up on a barbershop stage somewhere for barbershop choruses. It, it, it fits so well wow. for something like that. So all in all, the Shawn Mendes part, which is what I was going to loop back to, it was, it was a pleasant surprise. I, I thought he was great, again, in what he was given. I don't believe the story. I never once sat there and thought, I'm believing that this alligator is <laughs> is talking and singing to his family. I Were you supposed to? It's a movie. Let's supposed to get lost in stuff. Are you I, supposed I, to believe an alligator? Okay. Well, I'm just, you know. Okay. I'm a Star Wars fan. I believe that a droid can talk and have emotions. So, I mean, you know. They can. Have okay. you not been to Disney? Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. So that's my point. So I just don't even get me started on Paddington too. One that, of the greatest films. The Lyle Lyle Crocodile. If you're going to see, it, you're taking your kid to see it. I think it's going to be a winner. Mm -hmm. But if as a movie that the, the best kid movies are the ones that adults get enjoyment out of too. There's yes. something left on the bone for them. Sure. This did not have that for me, and so I gave it a five. Pleasant surprise, but that doesn't mean it's a great film. Solid five. Okay, so let me bookend this with uh, another heavier movie. This is Women Talking. And I'll tell you my attitude when I saw that the movie coming out called Women Talking was not enticing. Just as the same as it would have a title that said Men Talking. Okay? <laughs> it just doesn't sound all that great. It so happened that my wife had just finished the book. And uh, so we, I said, okay, let's do this. Let's, let's watch this movie. It is the story of a Mennonite community where the men have committed horrible atrocities, the most horrible you can think of except murder, on their own wives and children. It takes place over the course of about 12 hours. And it is women talking. And I know that there's some people listening in the audience and going, wow, this doesn't, you could not have convinced me more to not watch a movie than blah, 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 blah. they're not nattering. Okay. This is not a name conversation. These are women who have gathered because the men of their community uh, have been taken to jail, the segregated community of which they don't know anything about the outside world. And these men are coming back where not only are they horrible human beings, but they're probably going to take revenge on the very victims they you know, perpetrated their acts against in the first place. So these women have to decide, are they going to stay in this community and try to protect themselves and their children? Or are they going to flee to the unknown where they don't even speak the language? They don't have a map of what is around their farming community. It all belongs with the men. So these women debate some very, very serious issues about forgiveness, about safety, protecting your own family. They wonder, oh, if we leave, if all the women of this community leave, 
what's going to happen to uh, the children? Uh, what, who's going to teach the children? Are we fleeing or are we abandoning? Uh, there are so many heavy issues here that they discuss, and these are big, big questions. And this could only be done well with some outstanding acting performances. And I want to draw attention to three women that I think are, are absolutely worthy of uh, getting some kind of attention, uh, even though they may not, because I think they'll probably get split up because there's so many. Rooney Mara, uh, the girl with the dragon tattoos, where, maybe where you uh, might recognize her. She doesn't look anything like she does in that fi- in film, but uh, <laughs> she is uh, one of the leads uh, who, you know, it, it just does a tremendous job. Uh, there's a rising force in acting, Jesse Buckley. She was in the movie I'm Thinking of Ending Things and uh, the very uncomfortable movie that came out in the summer of 2022 called Men. Uh, she is a force. She's she's just so strong when she's on screen. And Claire Foy, who people may know from The Crown, just uh, some of the many people that are in this movie that just do a terrific job of asking these questions and just and, and having about 12 hours to decide before the men come back, what are they going to do? to do. The movie was directed and adapted from a screenplay. You know, it's an adapted screenplay. Uh, Sarah Polly did both. She directed this film and uh, took what my wife tells me is a, a very long and very complicated book and boiled it down to its essence. And she did it really well. I think Sarah Polly is going to get a lot of attention awards-wise for her direction and for the adapted screenplay she put together. This movie is not pleasant, but it is good. And it is a movie I've talked about now for a couple of days with uh, my wife. Since we've seen it, a lot of questions came up, further discussions. Uh, I'm going to give this movie an 8.5. Solid choice. Women talking. Resist your temptations to pigeonhole this movie as something it truly is not. Well, that was the best review of the day. If you've been listening to the Untitled Film Project podcast and you said, guys, why didn't you mention this? Or why aren't you talking about this movie? Well, we love getting your suggestions. So please seek us out, Untitled Film Project podcast, on any social media. We love the interaction. We love when you disagree. We love when you tell us about something that we didn't know about. Thank you for listening to the Untitled Film Project podcast. To support the show, please rate, review, follow, and subscribe. Original music by Jeremy Schwartz. Special thanks to the Music City Film Critics Association. Editing and post-production by Jeremy K. Gover. Voiceover by Chad Bennett. The Untitled Film Project podcast is presented in cooperation with iHeartRadio.